Let's have a look at why the law of cosines is true. So we're going to take a triangle. Any triangle, if you want to put it on the Cartesian plane, I could put one coordinate at 0, 0. And then if I'm going to call the sides, let's say A, uh, I think B is my standard, then C, this point would be B, 0. It's fair to put that uh, along the x axis in the positive direction. Uh, so let's see, then I still have one point that I have to do a little bit of work on. Um, I need to know th this side of that triangle and this side, those are the coordinates here. Uh, so let's see, if, if I knew that this angle was alpha, I know sine alpha is, let's see, opposite over my hypotenuse, and my hypotenuse happens to be C. So let's see, what's that say? That says that um, the opposite side is actually C sine alpha. So C sine alpha is the Y coordinate for that point. Uh, similarly, I could say uh, cosine alpha is going to be the adjacent side over C. So the adjacent side would be C cosine alpha. Okay, so now what I'm going to be trying to do for the law of cosines is say, you know, there are actually, there are actually two different ways to describe the length of the side. Uh, one is just to say, hey, it's the side length A. The other is to take these coordinates and use the distance formula. So the distance formula says it's the square root of the difference in the x coordinate squared. So let's see, c cosine alpha minus b squared plus the difference in the y coordinate squared. Since 1 is 0, it just looks like c sine alpha squared. Convince yourself that really is the distance formula. Uh, first, I'm going to square both sides y so that the square root and the squared undo each other. So I get a squared equals, ignoring now the square root, I can worry about this term in here. Uh, I'm going to square that entire binomial. That means the first times the first here is going to get me c squared cosine squared alpha. Then the first term times the second, if I'm distributing that, I'll end up actually getting two of those. That's 2b, oops, 2b times cosine, but there's a c in there also. So 2bc cosine alpha. Let's see, and then I get a negative b times negative b, which is b squared. Now the second piece gives me 2c squared sine squared alpha. Now that might strike you as a whole lot of mess, but the point is, <clears throat> let's see, uh, I have an a squared, I have a b squared, I have two terms here that have c squareds in them, so let me pull the c squared out. I have c squared times cosine squared alpha, and then c squared times sine squared alpha. Then what's left? 2bc cosine alpha. Subtract it. Okay, so uh, now this should set off warning bells in your head. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So what do I have? I have a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine alpha. That is the law of sines. Sorry, the law of cosines. Okay, uh, that's how without knowing A, just by knowing C, B, and the angle alpha, we can get to A. Now there are actually three different forms of that. This is the form that we just created, but if you sort of rotated the things that you knew, you could find B by knowing A, C, and the angle beta, or you could find C by knowing side lengths A, B, and the angle gamma.